In chapter nine and 10, you learned how to do transactions and special journals. And so what you learned in chapter nine was that purchases on account, purchases of merchandise on account go in the purchases journal and anything that you pay cash for goes in the cash payments journal. And then in chapter 10, when you did a sale on account, that goes in the sales journal. And anytime you receive cash, that goes in the cash receipts journal. But there are some transactions that don't go in any of those four journals that we will still continue to use the general journal for, which is what we used for all of chapters one through eight. <clears throat> so the transactions we're gonna look at in this chapter are purchasing of supplies on account. Now, when you purchase merchandise on account, that goes in the purchases journal. And the difference is that merchandise is stuff you put in your business to resell to customers, whereas supplies are things you're gonna to use to run your business. So they are different. So supplies bought on account are gonna go in the general journal. Um, purchases, returns, and allowances, we'll talk about in this lesson. And then sales, returns, and allowances are lesson 11.2 and declaring a dividend is a lesson 11.3. So let's talk about buying supplies on account. The memo, like this here one here, is going to be the source document for purchasing supplies on account. And in that transaction, you're going to increase supplies because you're buying supplies. Supplies is an asset, goes up with a debit, and accounts payable is a liability, and it also goes up, but it goes up with a credit. So when we do this transaction in the general journal, just like when you've done this. In the past, you're going to have the date and then supply store is your debit, your memo number, and your debit amount. What's different about this from the past ones that you've done is that now because we have that accounts payable ledger that you learned about in chapter nine, we no longer just have an accounts that say accounts payable dash whatever. Now they have their own ledger, but we still have that controlling account accounts payable in the general ledger. So when you record this, you're going to write accounts payable slash the name of the company as the supply. And then you're going to put a diagonal line in the post ref, which on Cengage it will do for you automatically. And you put the amount in there. And that is because we're going to have to post that credit amount of 165.25 to both the accounts payable account in the general ledger and as the supply in the accounts payable ledger. So let's talk a little bit about purchases, returns, and allowance. Sometimes you buy stuff and it either doesn't work for you, it's not good quality, it's broken, some reason why you might need to return merchandise to a vendor. Um, and those are called purchase returns. The credit that that vendor gives you is called a purchase allowance. So basically they give you a credit back on your account. And the source document for recording those is what we call a debit memorandum. Um, looking at the purchases account. Purchases has a normal debit balance and increases with the debit. We learned that in chapter nine. So purchases, returns, and allowance is actually a contra account to purchases, which means it contradicts the purchases rule. Since purchases decreases with a credit, purchases, returns, and allowance is gonna have a normal credit balance. The debit memo is going to look something like this. It's going to have the list of what you're returning, how many you're returning, the unit price, the total price, and who it's going to. And the result is going to be a decrease in what you owe to the vendor, Mobley Tools in this example. To journalize that, you're going to decrease accounts payable because what you owe Mobley Tools has gone down and you're going to increase purchases, returns, and allowance. So your debit of accounts payable goes on the first line. And just like when we recorded the credit to accounts payable, we're going to record that the same here. You have to have accounts payable slash the name of the vendor. And that is so that we show that we post that to accounts payable in the general ledger and to Mobley Tools in the accounts payable ledger. Debit memo is abbreviated DM with the number. Again, you do the diagonal line and the amount. 
and then the credit is purchases, returns, and allowances. When you post this, you're going to post it to first the accounts payable ledger. So we have this one right here that says Estes Supplies and we have Estes Supplies. This one says Mobley Tools and down here we have Mobley Tools. So you start with your date, then you start with your journal page number, and then you're gonna do your credit amount here for Estes Supplies. We had a credit balance because accounts payable is a liability has a credit balance. Add those together. And for the one to Mobley Tools, because we're returning merchandise here, so what we owe Mobley Tools is going to go down. So that's a debit. You have a credit balance, debit transaction, so you subtract. And then the last thing you do is come back up and put those vendor numbers underneath the line because the account um, accounts payable names are behind the backslash, so they go under the backslash here. Then you will post to the general journal or the general ledger. So we have that accounts payable, S the supplies. So we already posted it to S the supplies. Now we got to go in and post it to accounts payable in the general journal. And you can see down here you're posting it there and figuring your new balance.